before before speaking about uh, scaling holacracy, uh, I, I think it's it's worth saying where where the roots are. We've started, um, I guess, more than five years ago, and we started with our uh, what is conventionally called contact center, but uh, that we call it uh, online office, and we tried the implementation on a really small scale, and. Um, and it actually didn't work well because of the boundaries with with other parts of the organization. And uh, but but we actually used it to drive and to change the the culture. And then um, I guess around four years ago or something like that, um, we made we made this really serious decision that took a lot of discussion. Okay, let's try to scale it all across the company. And that was a serious step with constitutional signing and blah 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 and that was the really the worst time to do that uh, if if i if i would have been given a task to to pick the worst time for implementation that was it uh, because at this very time several months after the decision our parent company was in a crisis and we had to move the operations to another bank introducing a multi-banking platform and that involved moving all the employees to another entity and um, restructuring the, the, the processes and in in a normal situation that would require a lot of direct command you know and and then secondly our business was growing like crazy and we doubled both in the new clients in the clients we currently serve we doubled in our sales and worst of all we doubled in almost doubled uh, in amount of personnel that we have or in amount of partners that we have and, uh, and 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 that was the worst time a lot of external changes a lot of internal changes business growth but partially i don't think we would have been able to achieve that without uh, without uh, the uh, the holacracy and the and the instruments and the Holy Spirit that we use because that was about transparency that was about just telling people do whatever but get it done and and scaling the mission scaling the tasks uh, I don't think we would have been able to grow like that uh, without um, um, uh, with with proper planning top down command we just like like a biological organism, we will let the whole thing grow. Uh, and and that's, that's kind of our background. Uh, I think what, what is crucial is that uh, our goal was never to introduce a holacracy. Uh, we, we never had, had the goal to, uh, to be called at a conference to speak about how to scale it. Uh, we never had the goal to to be written about in the, in the books, you know, about or be an example of whatever. Uh, our, uh, I, I had a really personal um, goal to get out of the operational side of things and to go on the circumnavigation, uh, which, in, which I still haven't done. <laughs> but, but I was able to get out of the operational side of things and um, be, be a little, uh, much much less involved now. We've given a lot of freedom uh, to the team and to the people of Toshka. And and secondly, we we thought that it's such a shame. By the time somebody grows as a leader in organization, they pretty much quit utilizing their skills and they become hundred percent bureaucrats, just making decisions they that they shouldn't be making. And uh, they don't spend time coaching. They don't spend time building products. They just build time doing useless stuff. And uh, and they thought, wouldn't it be great if uh, if the company would not be taxed with that? Uh, wouldn't it be great if the company would be able its to utilize its strongest people to the fullest? And uh, and that's the capacity that uh, I've seen in Holocaust implementation. But um, I think it was it was relatively hard for us to to introduce the the rules and to start to play by the book but but I think what was of utmost importance um, and and that was my point is that um, I've seen a lot of 
I would call it values or principles behind the book and uh, behind the constitution. Uh, and, and for me, it has always been more important not to, not to implement the letter, but to implement the spirit. Because uh, we, we had people that were really caught up uh, with, with the letter, with the rules. And, uh, and my experience shows that you can take any rules, any operational system, any framework or whatever, and abuse it to, to your own will and uh, abuse it to your own ego and to start destroying the company when you focus on yourself. Uh, I, I have this funny, funny theory. Well, since, since the whole thing about holacracy is about the cells and the circles and comparing it to a biological uh, organism, um, is that um, everybody might have cancer cells. And uh, what healthy immune system does, it kills uh, uh, cancer cells. But, um, but if, they, if they get out of control, they, they can potentially destroy the body. And what, what cancer cells do, they pretty much live for themselves. Uh, and, uh, and they start consuming the resources just, just for their own good, just for, for their own growth, without thinking about the body as a whole. In a healthy body, each cell uh, plays to the purpose of a larger organ. And then organ never exists uh, for, for itself. Each, every organ exists for the whole body. Uh, and, this is, uh, and this is the way uh, it becomes healthy and it, and it functions. And the eyes can see and send signals that we don't get our ass in trouble and uh, our liver keeps, <laughs> keeps whatever we, we swallow uh, away from us. You know, the whole, the whole system uh, functions and and one of the one of the tensions that was really hard to identify but uh, were really a threat to a growing company that uh, there were cells or there were uh, particular partners that that were ready to to exist for themselves just looking at their part of the uh, of the picture and, and and then they could actually abuse the book and they could abuse the rules to uh, to play this uh, particular game, and uh, and it was um, uh, a very purposeful and educational push on uh, on our side that we exist here as a whole, and uh, and if you are not working on a mission of a larger circle, then you are probably working against against the body. You are working just uh, just for yourself. You start to consume resources for yourself, and it and it becomes a really, uh, really poisonous uh, situation. And uh, so there were several streams. Uh, there was a stream of business business as usual, uh, because making making our clients happy is you know what 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 we're here for. Uh, and then uh, there were practicalities of. Uh, learning and scaling and how you do tactical meetings and how how do you do governance and uh, we made this stupid mistake we started with governance and um, uh, in some areas where we didn't have a, a solid operational system in place and people would just just kind of gather for meetings trying to do governance instead of actually speaking about um, what uh, what their success is and where it might be. We've also had uh, funny issues, and uh, I really believe that holacracy is really great in blowing up things that needs to be blown up, and in breaking things that were broken a long time ago but were camouflaged. Uh, because when you when you give enough freedom and just expect results, what what normally would happen. In, in, in a large company with a, um, authoritarian or whatever management, problems can be covered up for a long time or partners that are performing may be covered up for a long time. Uh, in, a, in a pretty horizontal structure where expectations are clear and results are clear and nobody from the top comes down and tells you how to actually do things, 
people that don't want to do stuff or people that don't have the capacity to do stuff or the, the processes that were broken initially and not functional or the cells that were just oriented in themselves, that becomes visible really, really quickly. So after we started a full, full fledged implementation, we, we've had several um, parts of the company and sometimes really important parts of the company that got broken down and they quit bringing, bringing results. And uh, we had voices that were saying, well, Holocaust isn't working. And well, it actually didn't work there, uh, but partially it was because there was nothing to work. Uh, and, um, and, and several times we had to step in and to say, okay, in this particular uh, part of the company, we, we introduce uh, direct management again. But, but I, it, it was funny because our purpose was not to, not to establish a direct command forever, but to reset the system in a way that it might uh, function again. And, uh, and it was a really great success to acknowledge that, okay, it's not working. It doesn't work operationally, it doesn't work culturally, it doesn't work in terms of the holacracy processes, but our goal is to, is to repair the, the business bit of it, but also to inspire the people again, or sometimes to, to change the roles a little bit, to, to establish a new version of leadership and to show how how a, a, a leadership and new reality might be, and uh, and then to uh, to let it go again, and uh, and it was a great success to to come and to acknowledge. Okay, we're broken here. We we want to reset. It it took around two two months or three months to uh, to revive the processes, and uh, actually this uh, might be one of the healthiest parts of our company now that, that went through these little surgeries. But it was also very transparent that, you know, we've, we've spoken about that, we acknowledged the problem and, uh, and we moved on. And, uh, and then step by step, uh, the, the rule was given, given back to where it belonged, to the people and uh, to, the, to the leadership. Mm. We, we were also really inspired uh, by the fact that um, you know, we, we can understand, for example, that in one circle um, there is a particular person that could be a great lead link, but, but just for that period, for that task, and then for, for a new season, we might need another lead link. And, uh, and that is spoken about with a lot of transparency and uh, a lot of honesty and, uh, and the great thing that people mm, are less and less asso associating their worth with their roles, but associating their worth with themselves on what, what they can deliver. And it's more about the role and less about the position. And, uh, and I think that it's really beautiful and, uh, and it's really wonderful. Um, and, and I know I've been, you know, speaking about bits and pieces here about how we've broken down, about how, what mistakes uh, we did that we've chosen the worst part. But my inspiration for, uh, for everybody is that you can scale with Holacracy. You would make your own mistakes, even with us that have chosen the worst timing to do that. Uh, it's still, it's still a success. But it's not about the letters in the constitution or in the book. It's, it's more about the spirit. And, uh, and the way I personally view it, it's, it's our way to introduce values in a really practical way. Instead of, um, instead of um, speaking with mottos, instead of saying, oh, do this or don't do that, we actually show that we, we value when people take responsibility, we value when people make decisions, and, um, and that's kind of how it goes. Um, yeah, yeah, I really like that. Uh, maybe run into the questions, let nothing get in the way of the work, not even holacracy, exactly, because uh, uh, it's, uh, it's not the Sabbath for the man, it's the man for the Sabbath. 
and and that's that's the general rule um, uh, about the onboarding process with new employees well it's complicated but we pretty much have to uh, to introduce the rules and uh, but uh, what is most important uh, people have to see that we actually live it we're a distributed company uh, our 2000 employees are scattered uh, along seven uh, seven time zones or maybe even eight i think eight time zones uh, I even I even don't know in how many cities and towns where we have people working with us. So it's it's partially digital. It's obviously a little bit different in our head office, but um, but uh, onboarding is pretty much like on the ship. You welcome a person, uh, you tell them the rules of the boat, where the life raft is, and then they watch how everybody does stuff, and and they do stuff. Um, uh, you mentioned hard times during your growth phase. What's the reason you kept on working with holacracy and didn't switch back to traditional system? Well, I, it's kind of, um, I believed in the potential and uh, I, I believed in the people in it. And uh, it, it, was, it was very tension driven um, when we discussed it. Okay, there is this tension. And some people would say, well, it's because of the holacracy. But then if we look deeply, it wasn't because of the holocracy. The things that are broken would have been broken anyway. And, it, it, well, it was because of the holocracy that they broken down fast, but it was either a weak leadership or misunderstanding of the mission or uh, not enough talent in a particular circle that would just understand on how to do, how to carry the, the work or not enough focus on the client, but it was never, never a holacracy. Um, how did you manage to legitimize the switch of power during the short phases of top-down leadership? We had an official decision, the same people that adopted the constitution said, okay, we see the leadership of the company said, okay, we see the problem and we make a decision and we announced for, for how long the exception would play. We said, okay, it's gonna it's gonna last for two months, and uh, and that's that's how it's gonna be done. And then there was an official. I think we we had to prolong it for two or three weeks, but then it was an official announcement. Okay, now place place back uh, by the constitution. How did you assign the lead link roles at the beginning? Has the role taken over by former line manager or have you brought the fresh blood in these roles right from the beginning? We would have not, uh, I think, survived bringing the, uh, the fresh, fresh blood. We pretty much in the beginning, we created as horizontal, uh, we were as horizontal as possible. Uh, all the line managers kept, uh, kept the roles. And I guess the first, the first painful experiences were when, uh, when we started to replace uh, the, the lead links, acknowledging that some things are not, are not working and the lead links are not performing, but we kept them in the company and kept the respect. And, uh, and people started to learn that, you know, the role is, the role is one thing and the position is another and the person is mm, totally different. And um, first time it was painful, then, then it's, it's becoming easy. It still can be painful sometimes. I don't think we would have survived a lot of fresh blood in the beginning. Uh, rules are easy to implement, but to create the spirit is a lot harder. What have you done to help people develop the right spirit? Well, uh, I, I have several theories about, about the cultural stuff. The first one is you have corporate culture, whether you like it or not. And the only thing you can do is to shape it. Uh, my second uh, belief is that uh, corporate culture is not is never shaped with words, because like people are like teenagers in school. Uh, whatever you tell them, they test and they believe uh, what you do, and um, and not what you say. For example, if the teacher comes to a class and says, "Okay, smoking is really bad for you." But then if kids uh, find them smoking, what they're gonna figure out? First of all, the guy is a hypocrite. 
Secondly, it's, it's okay to say stuff and to do something different. And th thirdly, well, or fourth or whatever, smoking is cool. So it's, it's always the, the behavior, the acts that, that shape the culture, never, never the words. Uh, we had several instances, for example, where we had adopted the rules or the policies and they were violated. And, um, and it's not adoption of the policies uh, during the government meeting that, that shaped the culture, just did nothing. Uh, it's, it's the violation of the policies that shaped the culture and send a signal, okay, the policies are somewhere there but we can play different. But what really shaped the culture is that we acknowledge that the rules were broken, that the governance that we took upon ourselves was broken, that it was not right, and it was amended, it was made whole again. And that sent a really powerful signal that we take our rules seriously. Sometimes by a mission or by bad will or whatever, we can, they can be broken, but we value rules above the respect of people, we value rules above um, the respect of who did that. If we believe, if we believe it's true, we're gonna bring them back and we're gonna restore it. And and I think that's that's one of the most like powerful things that uh, that that happened at the instance.